Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. We bless you, Lord. We bless you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Father God. Thank you, Jesus. We glorify you. We magnify you. We bless your name and we acknowledge your name in the midst of us right now, Father God. Oh, how we love you, God. How we love you, Father. We thank you for all that you've done for us, Father God. And thank you for being here in the midst of us. Thank you for this beautiful day. Thank you for this beautiful night. Thank you for all that you are. You are a wonderful God. And we honor you and we worship you. Oh, we bless you, Lord. We bless you, Lord, for who you are. We acknowledge you. We perceive you, God, as the perfect holy God. The God Almighty, you are our Father, you are our Creator, Creator of the heavens and the earth, your majestic presence and glory, your wisdom and honor is everlasting. Hallelujah, glory to God. Let it be all over the airwaves, let it be all over the world right now, God in the whole universe father god and we thank you for your presence in every way and with all of us father god and let that presence and that light like in a candle god continue to burn continue to cause flame that it is a light of life that came from you it is the light that gives us understanding it is the light that gives us that warmth and flame that will keep us moving forward, Father God. Oh, hallelujah, glory to God. And we acknowledge you, Father God, for all those right now that are going through some things in life. They may not acknowledge you, God. They may not be seeing you, God, on how they're working in their lives. But, Father, we acknowledge you for their lives that you are there with them, that you are here with us, that you are touching them, Father God, and making things work out for all the people that you are watching right now, through the angels and through the people of God. Thank you, Father God, for the movement of the Holy Spirit. Thank you, Father God, for your systems and your strategies. Thank you, Father God, for the people that you have placed in different places and position so that they can magnify, so that they can bring your presence there, God. And whoever these people are that are standing before the gap, those who are working and laboring for your kingdom, that, Father, let there be a renewing of their strength, renewing in their spirit for courage, for perseverance, that they, may, that they may complete your work, God, in the area of where they are right now. That, Father, you are the source of their own breath and living, moving and being for your glory, Father God. Oh, let our eyes be open, Father God, to see the glory, to see your works, to see your, your, your systems that you have already laid before the foundations of the world that has been working and moving, that let our eyes stay open and stay beholding only your works and the heavenly, heavenly intervention in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Glory to God. Welcome everybody to Road Download. And I am going to share with you if you have watched the I Know My Assignment channel, wherever you may be on Kingdom Community TV, I did share over there about divinity. Our identity is the invisible. We are invisible divine beings. We have invisible divinity emanating, emanating now 
through the inner truth of the Word of God in Jesus Christ Himself, yielding, yielding to the Holy Spirit completely. Hi, everybody. Um, I want to go ahead and greet my mom. Shalom po. Brother Joel, magandang gabi po sa inyo. At salamat po sa pagsama ninyo sa oras na ito. God bless you po sa lahat po ng mga ginagawa ninyo. Sa, para po sa kaharian ng Diyos na ang inyong buhay ay patuloy na naging isang testimony, isa pong witness na kayo po ay pinagpala at patuloy na pinagpapala dahil sa inyong puso at spirito na kalakip po ang king ang kaharian ng Diyos at ang ating amang Diyos sa buhay ninyo and ang inyong pong pamilya. Salamat po sa pagsama niyo po ngayon dito sa road download at uh, I will share a little bit uh, again on 2nd Peter chapter 1 verses 3 4 I'm just going to stop to verses 3 2 3 and uh, actually just verses 3 and 4 It is very important that we understand also not only just understand but have true knowledge the true knowledge that comes from the spirit of god and through the kingdom of god that is here now from the heaven peter said in that verse he said that his divine nature his divine nature has granted to us all and who is that us That's me, that's you, Ambassador Joel. That's me, that's you, everybody who's watching right now. I want to go ahead and greet my mom and all ICMA Philippines and my brothers and sisters all over the world. The divine nature, hello, Pastor Melissa, McDuffie, great to see you, has granted to us all merity. The divine power has been given to us. So we have power. Power means might, strength, ability, dynamis, power. It is with force. It is with movement. It is with action. It is something that will propel us to move. Power that is not stagnant. Power that is not just a potential, but a power that is active. You and I have been given an active divine power. Now, this is in relation to our image. Now, this is our image of God that He has given us this divine power. You know, hello, Melaxa and Brother Ray, invisible. Yes, we can't see our divinity unless we demonstrate it. The divinity, it's a spirit, it's a nature of God that is in the invisible yet has exertion of power like the wind. The wind is invisible. Oxygen is invisible. But better believe it or not, oxygen has power to either cause someone to die or cause someone to live. That is the power of oxygen because we, our physical body, are made up of oxygen. We need oxygen. Now, if we look in the spiritual being that we are, we need that divine power because that divine power means death and life of our understanding and our spirit on how to live right, live, live righteously in here in this physical body so let me repeat this again because this is very powerful elmer uh, brother ray and pastor melissa joel that we have already been stamped we have already been given our divine nature when we received the holy spirit the holy spirit started right away to change our nature to transform our nature he did not wait for any single moment but he went to work right away he cultivated our spirit and our soul to become like him So even the Holy Spirit was given work by the Father. There's a reason for the Holy Spirit that He has in, 
been imbued in us because it is the Holy Spirit that will exert a force so that divine nature of God will be imparted unto us. So that the divine nature of God can replace that nature that has corrupted the spirit and that has corrupted our soul. So immediately the Holy Spirit makes a cleanses us, put us and anoint us to be positioned and approved to receive his divine nature. To, to get into that state of having divine nature, the Holy Spirit has to do so many removal of debris and dirt, removing and destroying the things that are dishonoring to God. That means the Holy Spirit right away quickened us, taught us, which are of corrupted thoughts, which are thoughts that are toxic thoughts and programs that are not from God. He went to work right away and he did that for us. Glory to God. Can you imagine and believe that? That it says his divine power has been given to us. So right now, Pastor Joel and Melissa, you have a dynamo. It's like a dynamo, a dynamic force. It just keeps on running and moving. And it's like an electric power. It's like a flame of coal that's dynamic, everlasting, continually moving and removing things that are not of God. Because he placed the divinity the deity, our likeness, that of God. And it has been given to us. Now, look at what it says there. It has been given to us that pertain to life and godliness. So that means if we don't know that we are divine in nature, we're not going to have the true knowledge and wisdom of how to live life according to God. We're not going to be able to live life according to the will of God because something within us has to shift and has to change and to be removed. That nature that we know that we are corrupted, that we have been defaulted, that there we have we have faulty, we have faulty nature. Hello, Chris. The faulty nature now has to be removed and be replaced by the divine nature of the Father. So if we act our godliness, if we live life according to other knowledge that we get from the world, we are still walking that is out of God's righteousness and alignment. Hello, Oki Angeles, my brother, and Michael, and hello, Yote family. Hello to my uh, Pastor Jess, and also uh, everyone in, in Yote ministry. So let me go ahead and continue here. It means all things that pertain to life. Repeat it with me. All things that pertain to my life, that pertain to this life. All things and godliness. Why is it important that we need to understand godliness? Because we have the godly nature. Jesus said that ye are gods. We are gods in the earth. We are the Elohim on the earth. So part of knowing our identity is that, that we are God's people. We are godly. That we have been sent like the Father and so, if we don't understand, hello, Sister uh, Mary T again, if we don't have and receive and know that we already have that divine power, the dynamo power that will make you and I live life righteously, live life in alignment and according to God and godliness through, and this is so vital also and I want you to read those verses 3 and 4 and really read it slowly one by one by word because there is power in these verses so anything that pertains to life and godliness has been granted to us but the question is are we successful in living life in a godly way are we successful in living life 
according to the divine nature of God. And that's why sometimes we underestimate ourselves. Sometimes we disapprove of ourselves and who we are because we still have this thinking and mindset of what the world has trained us to think, that we are mere human beings, that we are mere human beings with emotion, with souls, and we go on with life in the earth and just be here in the earth and, and just go on so that you can survive and so you can just walk life because you are born here on earth. But it's not that way, that we are born in the earth with the will of God, that we will be the gods here on earth that has his divine image and nature. And how can we now, the Holy Spirit is the one that's teaching us, transforming us and making us to understand and so that we can receive and be imparted with that divine nature, that divinity is through this is through it says there through the knowledge of him who called us to his glory and excellence wow glory to god now this is where things really have to meet through the knowledge of him who called us to he the greek word that says there of knowledge go ahead and research it the greek word of knowledge there means um, I believe it's a pig, a pig gnosticis. Uh, let me see if I wrote it down here. It says epignosis. <laughs> there you go. Epignosis. And the root word of epignosis is the ginosko. You've heard of this, my brothers and my sister. Ginosko. Ginosko. It is a verb, it is an actual word. It's not a one time knowing who God is. It's not knowing one time who the Spirit is. It's not knowing that Jesus is the Savior. It's not knowing about the kingdom of God is here on earth. But it is a continuous learning through communion and intimacy with the Holy Spirit in order to correct us completely so that we can understand what this divine nature means to us and what it does to our lives here on earth. And it even says there, the epignosis means when you have the knowledge of Him, it means it has to be precise, it has to be correct, because we can even make some errors. We can make mistakes. We can make misconceptions. We can have wrong notions of things. And now that's why the investment of our time to gain this true knowledge, through communion, through being with the Holy Spirit at all times, and we, and the Holy Spirit being with us all the time, will rob his nature that is divine. You know how much power the Holy Spirit has to influence us? The Holy Spirit is the most powerful influencer in the earth right now. He is the high influencer that is of heaven that is influencing people's lives because the Holy Spirit is not a rough, he's not, he's not someone that is violent, though, though we should be the one that has the violent spirit to learn, the violent spirit to know, the violent spirit to really live life according to what God has designed us to live. And then it says there, the knowledge of him who called us to his own glory and excellence. Glory to God. See, God has a responsibility. The Holy Spirit has a responsibility for us because we are called for what? For glory and excellence. So the Holy Spirit took on the responsibility to change us from inside us. He has a responsibility to transform us according 
to the excellence and glory of God. The Holy Spirit's work is to make sure that we are looking like heaven, that we are looking like God, that within us, that we are framed and formed like God. Because we are originally gods in the earth that was lost because Adam lost his image knowing that he is of divine nature. Adam lost the divine field of his sight of who he is. Because God is divine and that's why Reuben, Merity, Jerome, glory to God, hallelujah, my divine brothers and sisters, you are divine that is higher than other deity that other people worship. Any other spiritual deity, any other invisible deity spirit that others are worshiping. You, Catherine, have the divine nature that originally came from the only source and original source of divinity who is the Father in heaven. The only divine power that we have to receive is that divine force from God in heaven. Now, let me tell you that it says divine power. The word power there is very important. Shalom, J.R., J.R., Portes, and Sai. The word power. That means that power is within us and continually working within us. And let us allow that Spirit of God to work through us. Let us not inhibit the glory power, the divine power that is already in us to make us grow, to make us realize our true identity. Now, you follow us in I Know My Assignment channel. We're talking about the identity. And one of the foundations of knowing who we are is the identity that is related to the image of God and that image of God is one of and one of that is being divine in nature wow glory to God hallelujah if we see ourselves as divine in nature and we have the kingdom and we are in the kingdom we're not going to be we're not going to be influenced to seek after for more things. We're not going to be influenced by other things to search for the greatest because we have the greatest in us. We have the greater power in us. Nothing should already influence us to go the wrong direction because we already have that rightful power of how we should be. And this is what the world is doing to distract us, to see something even greater and better, blinding us that all that we have is what the world is looking for. Yet because we're ignorant, yes, because we don't know, yet because we don't understand, yet because we are in a state of feeling like it's not enough, because we are in a state that we're still looking as if we are not complete in Christ. Hallelujah. We're missing it. Then we get back into the circle of things where we are being blown away, tossed to and fro by other teachings in the world because we always see the other things greater outside. And that is what the trick of the enemy is now. Look at the world. The world is also increasing in its glory. The world is also increasing in its glory in the natural things. And people can be dissuaded with that. That, that. that they may be fooled and blinded of its, its grandiose, glamorous, great look. I mean, you look on TV. Everything looks so nice and so perfect. Everything looks so good, right? And then you, you start comparing yourself to that of what you see before you. But we have to compare to look at ourselves, to see what the Holy Spirit sees us and how we should be looking at ourselves. That the Holy Spirit keeps turning our head to look.
look within us because it says here in the Bible, my brothers, all things that pertain to life has been already granted to us to do, to be, and to work according to His power. And this power is not just power that the world can give. This is power that came from the divine being, our Father, our, our almighty source. Glory to God. Hallelujah. It, it's not even enough our body to receive this divine power of God. Oh, we repent, Lord. We repent right now. That we get distracted of other greater power that we see. That we have misplaced our sight. That we have misplaced our hearing. That we should stay to look inside of us. That's why everyone is still chasing, is still wondering if we already know what is in us, we're no longer going to be wanderers in the earth. There's, we're not, we don't belong anymore as wandering people. We're not, we're already a people of God, chosen, imbued with power by the Holy Spirit. So that we can be transformed, so that we can be changed, so that we can continue to emanate, to emanate now, emanate now through the inner truth, the inward. It is in you, Anna. It is in you, Brother Joel, and in us, the church, in the kingdom, Sai, and in us, JR. Catherine, it is in you because the Bible will not lie saying it has been granted to you this divine power. But what do we do with this divine power? How do we manage? How do we work? How do we cultivate? And how do we use this divine power? Maybe Maybe it's time for us to really get into that knowing that God, glory to God, hallelujah, oh, hallelujah. You can, you can just get rejoicing because you have that divine power in you in the kingdom. That knowing because you know the Holy Spirit by experience. Ginosko is experiential knowledge. So what does this mean? Experiential knowledge will begin through you. Experiential knowledge begins within you. Because there are knowledge that will come from the outside. There will be knowledge that you will hear from the outside. But there should be an experiential knowledge that what you hear from within you because divinity comes from it inside you. He already put that divine nature in us. And so we will learn of Him. Where? In our minds, in our spirit, in our soul. Within us is the kingdom. Within us is a whole university. Whole university inside of you, Jerome Merity. A university of where God is teaching us anything that we would like to know about Him and what everything that we would want to experience through Him. So then it says there, by which He has granted to us His precious and very great promises, so that through them you may become partakers of the divine nature. God is not selfish. He imparted himself into this earth suit. He distributed his divine nature in every man through the Holy Spirit. Those that are born of the Spirit has already parts impartation. Heavens, there's little heaven spread out in this world through us. There is divine, there's so many divine natures in the world walking alive divine people of God 
that are here right now that have partook unto the divinity or divine nature of the Father. Having escaped, says there, from the corruption that is in the world because of sinful desire. Glory to God. When we get activated by this divine power, we will then start to emanate. We're then going to start to reflect. We're then going to start to demonstrate godliness, which is the nature and the image of God. And that we will be walking in His righteousness and actually will begin to walk away from sinful desire. We will, says there, having escaped the corruption that is in the world. Glory to God. You are walking incorruptible anymore within you and inside you and inside of us. But that power has to be reignited that you are more than just mere human being following, walking the systems of this world in the now, but you are divine. Hallelujah. Look at you within yourselves right now. Look at you and see yourself. You're divine. Rowena, you're divine, Marity. In the glory of God, there is a divine power in nature. Hallelujah. That the enemy is afraid for you to discover and understand because that divine power overtakes them. Because that divine power keeps them away and stops them from doing their works against the people of God and against you. So all these things have been given unto us. So let us understand our true identity. That is the true knowledge because we experience God within us. I don't know your individual experiences with the Holy Spirit, but I know, I know, but I know that it must be so delightful that it brings life, that it quickens every part of who you are, that cast away low self-esteem, low low confidence that will cast away things that makes you see yourself lower and incapable and inadequate if you see if we see ourselves in this divine power and nature then all these things shall be removed and that we will receive greater confidence greater esteem completeness and satisfaction so glory to God for this word today, according to Peter, that one of the image of God, one of the images that we should understand and emanate is that image of divinity, that power that is in us, identity, invisible, divinity, invisible, divinity emanating now, through inner truth, which is the Holy Spirit and God, yielding to the Holy Spirit. That's I-D-E-N-T-I-T-Y. Glory to God. Rose, you are divine. Glory to God to all of you. Just say it today, even tonight. I am of divine nature. I am divine being. You walk knowing that you are divine because you are carrying the glory of God. Because you know you have partaken into His nature. That you are walking above and in power of all things. That no one can snatch it away from you. That no one can steal it away from you. Because it is the Holy Spirit who placed that and who decided to abide in you. The Holy Spirit decided to abide in you in spite of, in spite of how you see yourself less or weak, but He decided and still chose you. Even though how much you see, how corrupt, 
you are, how sinful we are, how fallen short of righteousness we are. But he decided, I'm going to reside in you, Redentor. I'm going to stay with you. I'm going to be there as I promised. Even though things doesn't look like great for you, yet I choose you, yet I vote for you, yet you are mine, yet I will not even forsake you because I made a decision because what I'm about to do in your life has already been finished and that life is of eternal, beautiful excellence. It says there, excellence and glory in God. Hallelujah. For one second, let us stand in the standing position of the Holy Spirit. Look at yourself. Look at myself. I look at myself, how the Holy Spirit sees me. What are you receiving right now from the Holy Spirit? And what is saying to you how you look to Him right now and how He beholds you? How is He treating you right now? Thank you, Holy Spirit, for treating us so special. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for treating us in spite of our weaknesses, in spite of who we are right now, in spite of doing things and making mistakes and, and having toxic thoughts, yet you decided to stay with us. That I thank you that you see us pure and perfect in your eyes. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Reflect on this divine nature that we already have been given through Christ Jesus and in the Holy Spirit. It is a power, it is a might that will make you stand up, that will make you fight, that will make you move forward, that will make you not quit because God's reminding us of this force and power of being divine that nothing can overtake and overcome your spirit, that Jesus has already finished and done the mission and ascended and descended into the earth, that it is now covered with his glory. Glory to God. I love you all. Thank you so much for joining me today. Jerome and Rose Redentor. I'm going to go ahead and start greeting you. Mary T, Anna, Joel. Uh, Anna Eletto, J.R. Portes, Sai, and uh, I want to greet Catherine also, Ruben, and Joyce, uh, Brian, I see you, and Michael Marquez, thank you so much, Oki, and Ikma Philippines, uh, different parts of the world, Melissa, Elmer, and May Laksa, I love you all, uh, God bless you, I will see you next time.